My name is Captain Olimar. While traveling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out, and I awoke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the skeletal hull of my beloved dolphin is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate this planet's environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I can't repair the dolphin by then... No. Better not to think about it. I must find the missing ship parts. Yee! Hello everyone and welcome to my walkthrough of Pikmin 1! PK Gam here and I'm going to show you how to 100% the game. First, go over here. Ah! Oh! What the heck is that thing? Well, at least that's what Olimar's thinking. <laughs> A strange thing has appeared before me. I had barely begun my search when it reared up as if it were waiting for me. It then dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we call an onion. I shall call this an onion too. And what is this glowing thingy in the ground that's coming up? Hmm. Interesting. The seed that the onion dropped took root in the soil, and has now produced an adorable little sprout. This sprout emits a strange light, and it sways back and forth without the benefit of wind. I cannot help but think that it is calling to me. I am compelled. I must approach it and press A. Okay. Ah, oh, it's so precious! Extraordinary! When I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Picking it has done no visible damage. It just stands there, staring at me. Its shape is similar to the Pick Pick brand carrots I love so much. I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. And that's how babies are made. Wait, what? No, wait, never mind. Here I am, stranded on a toxic planet, fighting to survive. And yet, I'm intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. I shall try and grab it and throw it with A. Why would you do that? If I was a critter, I would not like to be thrown. And I will call to my side with B. Hmm, perhaps he'll react to C and X as well. And then he explains the uh, camera controls here. It's kind of hard to tell if he's actually saying this. Oh, I guess maybe he is. <laughs> Alright, so as, I, as he was saying, A button. You grab the Pikmin like so. And you throw it, and it goes over to the cursor that you threw it to, like so. If you are throwing with any forward momentum, you'll throw it further than the cursor would be. Pressing the X button will dismiss it. Pressing the V button will call it the, that in, within that field of whistling, as you can tell. And pressing the C stick, you can control... Dang it, tutorial, I'm showing this off! Yes. And with the camera controls, our button changes the distance with the camera. I like it about here, typically. L button centers the camera directly behind you, wherever you're facing. And the Z button switches the perspective angle. Alright, so now we got ourselves a Pikmin. And we can't really do much with it at the moment. But we could do this. Throw it on top of that flower. And would you look at that? It just knocked it down. That was a pellet posy. And they have, of course, these sort of pellets. Bring them back to the onion of their appropriate color. And you will get the maximum value for those pellets. Those onions, they breed Pikmin based on nutrients that they're given. Astonishing, the onion has sown more seeds. The small red pellet the Pikmin harvested after cutting down a flower appears to be some type of food that can propagate more Pikmin. The onion seems to be a sort of incubator. Needless to say, I must study this strange life form more. If you don't throw the Pikmin directly on the flower, it'll attack the stem of it, and then it'll... See that little... Yeah, that's an HP gauge, basically, above the flower. Anyway, I'm gonna let it take that back, and press the A button multiple times in order to pluck Pikmin automatically, 
uh, he'll just walk from one Pikmin to another if you just keep tapping the A button as you're plucking them. It's a handy thing to know because he will take the most efficient route and time is money in this game. Well, it's actually time is ship parts and time is oxygen, time is Pikmin, time is everything in this game. But not on the first day though, there's no time limit on the first day. Anyway, I'm going to take a look-see around here and see if I can find some more pellets. Such as this five pellet over here. So I'll just throw one on here and- Oh! Oh, you can't seem to lift that. Well, the number on top is the number of Pikmin that you need to lift an object. The number on the bottom is how many Pikmin are actually on the object. See that? Two, three, four, five. And now they'll be able to take it back to the onion. And since this is the tutorial stage of sorts, everything goes really, really slow just so that you can get the hang of things, basically. It's a really chill first day here. Uh, all days after day one will have a time limit on that. I'll get more into that later, but for now, let's just relax. Watch the Fikmin bring this back to the onion. Whoop. Since it has a five on it, you get five seeds. Strangely, the uh, one pellets, you know, the ones that we were bringing in before, they have ones on them, but they give you two seeds when you bring them back to the matching colored onion. I don't really get why that's the only one that does that, but the other other pellets with the numbers on them, they give you the exact amount of seeds that are on the pellet itself. Well, if you match the color, otherwise it's going to reduce the amount of Pikmin you get. There's a pellet up there. And this is a real-time strategy game, so you can multitask by letting some Pikmin take stuff back to the base while you work on getting other Pikmin to other things and to keep productivity up. This is vital for getting yourself, I mean, getting this game finished, basically, because, as I said later on, there's going to be a time limit, so you're going to be racing the clock. It's fun, though, don't worry. And it's not that strict. Come on, guys, come on. There we go. Now, you'll notice over here, there was... Dang camera. <laughs> there was a box with a 10 on it. Let's just throw a Pikmin over there. Oh, looks like it needs 10 Pikmin, so let's just swarm over there with the C stick. And they will move the box right over. So the numbers are pretty important to know because you need to know how many Pikmin to bring to certain spots and we're going to be breeding a lot of Pikmin just to make sure we can always meet those numbers. The Pikmin are curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. A glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. If I can make use of their skills, perhaps I can fix my ship. I shall sum up all I've learned of Pikmin conduct. And then he sort of goes through this all over again. If you press the B button, you can skip the dialogue, and yeah, you, you pretty much know all this stuff. Oh, actually, I didn't show the computer. Press the Y button to see the computer. There's pretty much nothing here right now. Well, there's the controls, but I mean, there's going to be more here later. You'll see when I get to it. But for now, let's just take a look and what? Oh, it's alive. It's alive. Amazing! There's no mistaking it. My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? You haven't learned already, Olimar? Swarm it with Pikmin! But you're like, oh no, I don't have enough Pikmin. So take your team and go up here. Oh, look at that. There's a bunch of pellets. You can make up to 25 Pikmin on the first day. That's the max they allow you to have. And I'm going to take advantage of that. By the way, you'll notice that when you put more Pikmin on an object, they carry that object faster. And that is a good tactic to use in the uh, RTS genre here. Watch us. See how it got a little bit faster and I put a second one on that one? Now this one's going to catch up with that one eventually. But I'm going to have to wait for them to bring these back to the onion. Uh, I really... If you ever make a walkthrough on a real-time strategy game, I don't really recommend you do any cuts. Because things for the viewer wouldn't really make all that much sense. Like if I were to cut for them to go all the way over to the onion here while I'm doing other stuff in the background. Yeah, you get what I'm saying here. Because RTS games are 
managing your time, managing your resources, and when many Pikmin seeds sprout at once, I find it rather tedious to pluck them from the ground individually. My wife always told me I was no good at routine tasks. I guess I'll try to get it all done at once by repeatedly tapping A until I... Didn't I teach this before? Dang it, Alamar, pay attention to my video! I've noticed that when I add Pikmin to my group, they can become filled with excitement and flush with bright color. At other times, they revert to a paler hue and give off a dim glow. Paying close attention to these differences is bound to help me distinguish between Pikmin. Yeah, the Pikmin that are idle, like that aren't in your group here, they look like that. They get all pale and they have that little glow on their leaf and stuff like that. And I should probably explain the numbers at the bottom of the screen here. That one right there that I'm pointing to is how many Pikmin are in your group. Uh, that one, the 25 in the middle, is how many Pikmin are out on the field. The one out in the corner there is how many Pikmin are breeded, <laughs> breeded, are created in total. That's your total number of all Pikmin. Anyway, let's pluck these guys out of the ground and get our team of 25. Make sure they're all out of the ground though, otherwise you won't be able to have them in your team for the next day. There we go. And now we can grab the engine. Well, they can grab the engine. I'm just gonna watch them. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> so they're gonna bring that back. And while they do, let's admire the scenery as well as the curiously awesome music. Ah, so beautiful. Yet this planet is pretty hostile, actually. <laughs> the impact site here on the first day not so hostile, because, as I said, it's just a tutorial, just to get you used to stuff. So, everything's just really, just to get you adjusted to this game's mechanics and whatnot. They made it! <laughs> and the engine just pops into place on its own, and the ship kind of puts it back together, puts itself back together on its own. That's, what? How does it do that? I, well, it doesn't matter. Woo! Oh, glorious. With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back towards home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of the remaining parts? That search starts tomorrow. No, oh, I think I'm being followed by them. Run, 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 run. One day since impact, I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface, or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons? Either way, it seems they'll help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I can't recover them all, I may never return home to my family on planet Hakatate. Analysis shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below, as it holds the keys to my survival. I name it the Forest of Hope. I explore tomorrow. And at the end of each day you're gonna get to this results screen here. On day one, this really doesn't make sense, the graph at the top there, because there's no time frame. It doesn't make sense for that graph to even exist, because that represents how many Pikmin were uh, created at certain times of the day, and there was no time on the first day. <laughs> the sprouted is how many you sprouted in that day. Lost in battle and left behind are something that I'll cover in the next part, because that's kind of spoilerific. And I'm going to just save my game. And it'll take you directly to the map screen. That is the Forest of Hope. 
of which I'm going to start in the next part. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you then.